Hi guys, Ricky Pope here with Christian Nerds Unite, and today we're going to talk all about MODOK, and we'll get to that right after this. I've been using Coinbase.com and the Coinbase app for cryptocurrency for about two years now, which makes it really easy and safe to buy, sell, and store digital currency like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Sign up now and use my link at christiannerdsunite.com slash coinbase and get $10 of free Bitcoin when you buy or sell at least $100 worth of digital currency. Join 43 million other people who buy, sell, and manage their crypto on the world's most trusted crypto exchange. Check it out at christiannerdsunite.com slash coinbase. And now back to the show. Today, we're going to talk about Marvel's new show, MODOK, who he is and uh, why there's so much interest in him right now. Uh, but first, we want to start with some scripture. 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. And Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Now, I wanted to talk about this new show. Uh, it's on Hulu. If you're not familiar with MODOK, uh, the new show that's out, it is available on Hulu. And uh, I thought I would give you a little background on who MODOK is and kind of talk about the show a little bit. First, what is MODOK? MODOK is a super villain in the Marvel universe. And, uh, it stands for, depending on what you're reading, it stands for that first M either stands for mental, mobile, or mechanized. So, uh, I'm going to go with mental, mental organism designed only for killing. And MODOK first appeared in Tales of Suspense 93, and that's in September of 1967. So MODOK has been around for a long, long time in the Marvel Universe. Uh, kind of funny, uh, ING did a list of the top 100 comic book villains. He did make the list of the top 100 comic book villains of all time. Uh, he is number 100. So that can, that'll tell you right there. He is, uh, he's not super high up in when we think of the pantheon of villains that are available in the Marvel universe but he is one, um, and he has gone up against some significant uh, characters in the past. Uh, at first, he was kind of the Captain America villain. Eventually, he became the Iron Man villain. Uh, he's closely associated with the Hulk. Uh, in some, ser some series, he actually created the Red Hulk. Um, he's dealt with Miss Marvel and, and many other Marvel heroes. He's also closely associated with AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics, which is basically an evil corporation in the Marvel Universe. Now, if you've never seen a picture of MODOK, uh, he is basically a huge head with little tiny arms and legs that dangle from something that appears to be a floating chair. But the chair is kind of his whole body and helmet. Uh, it, it is a strange, strange looking character that uh, Kirby came up with back in the day. Uh, Jack Kirby was definitely thinking out of the box when he came up with MODOK. Now, 
This is a brand new show. It's going to be on Hulu. It is Marvel. So it is Disney. And uh, if you're not super familiar with how this all falls out right now, and you're like, well, why isn't it on Disney plus Hulu is where Disney is placing all of its not quite right for Disney plus shows. What do I mean by that? I mean, shows that have a slightly more mature audience. Um, some of the Fox properties are ending up at Hulu rather than on Disney plus. So you're going to see things like Deadpool, you know, the Deadpool movies are on Hulu. They are not on Disney plus probably never will be since they're rated R. Um, runaways, which is another Fox TV property is also on, uh, on Hulu and not on Disney. Uh, Fox owns family guy of all things. Uh, so when Fox was purchased by Disney, Disney now owns family guy. So if you're a fan of family guy, congratulations, I guess uh, Disney owns them now. I don't know what that means, but, uh, because of that connection, it's on Hulu. So, uh, and now let's talk about Modoc. Um, it is definitely not in the same vein as all of the other Disney Marvel properties. This is not part of the MCU. This never will be part of the MCU. Uh, it is an animated series and it's a product uh, from the producers of robot chicken. And if you're familiar with robot chicken, it is a strange stop motion animation style. Uh, it is a bit of an acquired taste and the humor is a little out there, but they have always dealt with superheroes because their big starting place was action figures. And, uh, so that brought them into the world of superheroes and spoof comedy. Uh, now because it is robot chicken, it is that style of animation. So imagine if Robot Chicken actually had a huge budget and they did original characters versus action figures that they place mouths on. Uh, they actually created the figures from scratch. Uh, that is what Modoc is on Hulu. Um, and uh, we have the famous voice actor of Patent Oswalt. And uh, if you're familiar with him at all, funny comedian, pretty brash. Uh, and he is also one of the writers of the show. So you know that that's the kind of humor we're going to see. One of the kind of cool things that we get to see here is that they allow them to play around in the Marvel sandbox. And uh, they're able to pull out some characters that uh, we haven't seen on the MCU screen yet. So we have Wonder Man appearing in the show. And uh, if you're not familiar with Wonder Man, Wonder Man is a, a bad guy turned good guy. Uh, he's an early Avenger. And uh, that, that was kind of a theme in some of the early Avengers comic books where bad guys turned into good guys. Uh, later, he becomes an actor. Uh, he's part of the West Coast Avengers. And in the comic books, his brain pattern is actually the pattern for the vision. So there's some interesting things that cross over with the MCU. But this is definitely not going to be an MCU Wonder Man. He also becomes the love interest of Modoc's wife. Arcade is another supervillain who shows up in the show. And if you're not familiar with Arcade, uh, I would say he is probably a B list villain, not an A list villain. Uh, but uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, he showed up in the X Men quite often. Uh, he uh, has what he calls murder world. It's kind of like a cross between a circus and a pinball machine. And, uh, it is how he kills people for fun. Uh, so he is kind of a cool, interesting super villain to have show up in the show. Uh, we also see villains like the leader who's associated with the Hulk, uh, Mr. Sinister, who is another X-Men villain. And, uh, then we have, several, I think there's five other 
pretty much D-list villains. I don't know if you get lower than D-list. Uh, they're pretty lame villains with pretty lame names and pretty lame powers and backstories. Uh, but they become major players in the storyline for a few episodes. So uh, it's kind of interesting. Now, this is TVMA. So that's similar to a R rating for TV, but it's not quite the same. Uh, it, it doesn't use exactly the same rules. So expect some strong sexual suggestive scenes and some that are pretty openly sexual, uh, but they pixelate things so you can't see them. Um, lots of language and uh, lots and lots of cartoon violence and gore. Uh, let's just say, if it bleeds, it bleeds a lot. <laughs> so be aware of those things before you watch the show. If that is something that uh, triggers you, then this is probably not going to be the show for you. Uh, now, the trailer made it look, I, I actually saw the trailer several times. It made me laugh. I thought, you know, this could be good. Uh, we have Robot Chicken who sometimes can be pretty funny, uh, but I know they can be pretty brash. Uh, and we have, you know, Marvel money behind it. So, you know, this could be something good, but I knew who it was coming from. So I knew what to expect. Now, uh, the trailer, like I said, made it look funny. Um, but, uh, knowing who it was from, that's, you know, I knew where, what I was getting into when I watched the show. Now, it's for sure not for kids. Think late night Cartoon Network and then push the envelope even a little further out. That's what you're getting with this show. We all knew it was going to be a comedy from day one. Uh, and, uh, and here's the premise. So, Modoc is balancing his evil corporation, his aspirations for taking over the world, while he's trying to deal with his family, his wife and his two children, and his impending divorce. All of this happening at the same time. Doesn't that sound like the perfect setup for a comedy? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, animation is really impressive, by the way. Uh, if you've ever seen Robot Chicken uh, and you think, this is kind of lame, um, like I said earlier, imagine what if they had a real budget and they handmade all of the animated figures and did a really, really amazing job at it. Um, that's what we have here. The animation honestly is impeccable. It's super impressive. It is miles and miles above what you've ever seen Robot Chicken do before. I'm super impressed with that. Uh, now, the critics are giving it an 85 on Rotten Tomatoes, which technically gives it a certified fresh rating. I think that's a huge miss. I don't think it's even close. Um, I more so agree with the viewer view review. The viewer review is only at 65%. And, uh, and now, this is coming from somebody who loves Marvel. I actually was super interested in this show when I heard about it. I watched the trailer, and the trailer made me want to see it, uh, at least to check it out and see what it was going to be. Uh, the premise of the trailer just didn't come through. You know, the promise of the show, and they just didn't deliver, is what I would say. And uh, let me give you a little explanation of why. Um, <clears throat> let me tell you what I expected. Watching the trailer, here is what I saw. And this is there's actually a line that explains this. In the trailer, you see Modoc move into an elevator, and he slides down a tube, and you don't know where he's going. And one of his minions from AIM actually says, where does he go at night? Now, then you see him arrive at his suburban house with his family where he's dealing with the kid problems and the divorce issues. And, you know, all of this is in the trailer. So no spoilers here at this point. Um, 
So what I was expecting was a supervillain who has a supervillain company and he has problems with the supervillain company because he is about to lose his supervillain company. And then we have his other life where he is a suburban father of two and husband and dealing with that. And in my brain, watching the trailer, what I saw was him trying to keep both worlds separate and secret. He doesn't want his the superheroes or his corporation to know about his family, and he doesn't want his family to know he's a supervillain. That's what the trailer sold us. But that's not what we got. What we got was a whiny supervillain who is super self-conscious and who blends his family life with his work life openly and all the time. And it just didn't work. Um, so to start off, my biggest complaint is that the show didn't give us the premise that the trailer promised. I think that's a problem. I, I never like it when you see a trailer and it's the funniest bits and the movie's nothing like the trailer. That's super annoying to me. The next part is the storytelling. Um, the other thing I was kind of expecting was, I mentioned Family Guy earlier. Whether you like Family Guy or not, Family Guy has a certain premise and the Basically, the style of the show is a bunch of things happen. They go badly wrong. Things get fixed in the end. And we start the next episode from square one again. So there's no real consequences episode to episode. I thought that's where we were going to get. What we got was an attempt to create a 10 episode story arc. MCU style comedy. And that is hard to do. How do you keep a comedy going when you have to have high stakes at the same time? Because if you don't have high stakes, then you don't have a reason to push the story arc along to the next episode. Um, so Technically, each episode is kind of standalone, but the story arc is so heavy, it doesn't, well, I say the story arc, the story arcs, and I'll get to that problem here in just a minute, the story arcs are so heavy, you really can't watch a single episode in the middle and make sense of what is going on. So now let's talk about the story arcs. There's simply too many. In my estimation, a good, a good show will have multiple episodes, each episode having a self-contained story, but will have one story arc that builds and builds and builds to the finale shows, one or two last episodes of the season, the season finales, um, and that works. That kind of idea works. That's not what we got here. What we got here were multiple, multiple story arcs. It was almost like they tried to give everybody a story arc that, that tried to give the Modoc story arc. Um, unfortunately, they gave Modoc like two story arcs, three, three story arcs. We have the wife who has a story arc, the son who has a story arc, kind of. Uh, because it's important in certain episodes. And then we have the daughter who is kind of left out of story arcs, but she's kind of important to different episodes uh, at, at certain times. So it gets really muddled. So we've got uh, a strange combination there. Now, the wife is Hispanic, and somehow the family is also Jewish. I don't quite understand or follow all of the logic there. And I only bring this up because both of these items are important 
to the premise of a couple of episodes plus two of the story arcs. The wife has a story arc where she is a beginning uh, Instagram influencer and uh, and her manager is pushing her to lean into her Hispanic heritage and she is pushing against it very hard. She does not want to do that. That is not who she is uh, and it doesn't fit with her actual style. So uh, that's kind of interesting that they even brought it up, but uh, they did. And it becomes part of the, her story arc as a influencer. Then we have, I said, somehow the family's Jewish, uh, in everything I've ever found on Modoc, he's not Jewish or he has never been presented as Jewish. Uh, and as far as his wife, I don't know how that one, you know, is it his wife is Jewish or is he Jewish? I don't know, but their son is about to have his bar mitzvah and his daughter mentions in a later episode that she had her bat mitzvah and some of the things that went wrong with it. So why is this important? Because one of the story arcs is the son's bar mitzvah and he wants to have a show and he wants to do magic at his bar mitzvah and it's throughout the entire season. This is part of the show that they keep coming back to this conversation of, I want to do magic and Modoc saying that's stupid. Don't do that. Um, and the mom trying to get Modoc to convince the son not to do it. Uh, there's even individual episode that deals directly with this story arc. And then at the end of the season, we actually get to see this crazy bar mitzvah and all the strange things that happen in it, uh, you know, including some magic. So, you know, these are two story arcs that are just strange and odd to be in the show. Um, and they don't exactly revolve around Modoc, the main character. So, they're incidental, but they're important because of certain episodes. Um, now another story arc, and this one's directly attached to Modoc is that, uh, his company is being taken over that he's not a good manager and they're going bankrupt. And the only way to save the company is to sell controlling interest to someone else. They do. And it turns out it's an evil, a second evil corporation who is trying to take over aim and trying to run Modoc out and trying to get all of his super secret special uh, technology. Uh, so we have this story arc where he's trying to get aim back the entire series. So there's another story arc for you. Now, one more story arc for Modoc is his family story arc, which is his divorce. So every episode builds on, you know, he's getting a divorce, why he's a horrible, horrible husband and father. And slowly we see him, coming around. He learns to be a better father, kind of. He learns to be a better husband, kind of. Uh, all these things he's trying to do, he's trying to become a better person, but he's still a supervillain and he still wants to take over the world. So don't forget that. Um, so he's a better person, but he's still evil. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, it's a car, it, it's an animated show. Just deal with that. Uh, so last but not least, and actually probably the biggest story arc is the time travel story arc. Now there is a time travel and this, this is some spoiler territory here. Uh, there is a time travel story arc where uh, Modoc goes back in time and he meets himself as his younger self. Then things go horribly, horribly wrong. His younger self is now time traveling and is super angry at the current Modoc because he's a wimp and never took over the world. And they get into a big fight and you know, that's how the season appears to wrap up in episode nine, which is strange because 
our big story arc ended an episode early. So there's that. <laughs> and, and then we have episode 10 where things go sideways again. And we see the conclusion of this time travel episode, this time travel story arc, we just reverse it. Just go, Hey, we're just going to take that back for just a few minutes. And, uh, we're, we're going to just say, we've got another time traveling one. It, he, trust me, he's the same guy. He's just in a different timeline or multiverse or something, because we do get into some multiverse things in that last episode. So our whole premise, our whole story arc from beginning to end, this time travel thing, we wrap it up and then we go, Hey, you know what? I'm not going to wrap that up because we want to leave you with a cliffhanger in episode 10, which is great, except we don't have a green light for season two. So rather than make a cohesive story that ends, since you have story arcs, uh, we've decided to leave you with a cliffhanger in hopes that Marvel will green light a second season. Now that's significant for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's be significant because this was a contract that was actually written up prior to Marvel TV becoming part of Marvel Studios overall. Uh, you used to have Marvel Studios, which was the MCU cinematic universe. And then you had Marvel TV that was doing things like, you know, like this show, uh, like some of the Fox shows, uh, you know, this is where Marvel TV is where we get to the, the, the Netflix shows, all these other sundry shows that didn't necessarily fit in with the MCU completely, you know, uh, agents of shield and things like that. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, in 2019, Marvel TV became a part of Marvel studios. So they were all now under the one umbrella, Marvel studios all under Feige, but this contract was written before that. So will Patton Oswald be able to do his second season? Will we ever find out what happens at the end of this cliffhanger? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think we will. I, I could be wrong, but with a Rotten Tomatoes score of 65 from audiences, that's just not there. It's okay. It's better than 50%. I've seen shows get second seasons for less than that, but honestly, I just don't think it's here. Uh, you know, we've got crass humor. We have some great animation that I can't imagine the amount of time and the amount of money that was put into creating this show. Now I mentioned time because even if they greenlit season two today, it would probably be a year or two before this second season could be completed and put out. So just think about that for a minute. We're going to wait a year or two to see what happens in a cliffhanger. That's a little, it's a little crazy. I don't think it will happen personally. Um, you know, I think the jokes just fall too flat. Modoc is just too whiny. There's just, there's just not enough here for a second season to really be worth it. And you know, if what I have said is not going to stop you from watching this show, I hope you enjoy it. I slogged through all 10 episodes because I wanted to talk to you about the show. Um, it was not fun. After the third episode, I was not excited about it, but I was determined because I'm that kind of guy. Uh, here's what I would say. If you want to give this show a shot, watch through episode three. If you get through episode three and think, Ugh, I don't think this show's for me, it's not. Just stop. It's not worth watching the rest. 
If you get to episode three and you think this is the funniest thing I've ever seen, this is brilliant, you will probably like the rest of it. But uh, I will say I wouldn't invest more than an hour and a half to find out. Uh, <laughs> Um, and, and like I said, be aware of all those other things I said. This is Christian Nerds Unite, so I know a lot of you have certain things that you just don't put up with in your entertainment. And some of those are definitely here. If language or vulgarity is a problem for you, this is not the show for you. If too much blood and gore, now mind you, it is cartoon blood and gore, so it's you know, that's a little bit questionable how gory it really is. And it's not even, when I say cartoon, I'm talking, uh, you know, there's entirely too much blood. Like that's more blood than a human body contains. And all you did was lose your arm. Okay. It's that kind of thing. Um, but it's done in such a cartoony way and I'm talking Looney Tunes cartoony way. It almost loses all meaning. Uh, but be aware, lots and lots of sexual innuendo and some pretty much straight up talk about sex. Um, nothing super graphic. Nothing is sh shown exactly. There is one scene where they pixelate something and we totally could have done without that, but that's what they decided to do because that's the kind of show this is. If I had to do over again, I would probably not watch this. I have no intentions of watching it again. It's definitely not a series that I would binge watch more than once. Um, and probably I won't watch season two. I hope that helps you make some decisions today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, make sure you click the like or click the bell or subscribe or, you know, whatever that button is that wherever you're watching or listening to this is just click that button. I appreciate it. Um, well, that's all I have for you today. I, don't forget. You can find all of our social links our, and our online store, as well as our YouTube channel at Christian nerds, And while you're there, check out our support tab and check out our Patreon. We'd love to have you support us before we go. I do want to leave you with a blessing. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling, the footprints of Jesus give you confidence to follow, and the fire of the Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God this day. We'll see you next week. Blessings. Amen.